What's up, Wave Makers? It's me, Mommy Sunette. Where's Claire? And welcome back to us getting back to our regular routine. I come to you barefaced and ready to put things on it. <laughs> I hope you all had a absolutely wonderful holiday and uh, you're adjusting well to being back in the swing of things like I'm sure you are. But listen, playtime's over. It's time to get back to the meat and potatoes. I'm gonna put these little things on my face. They're <laughs> eye masks that I found in my drawer that I didn't know I had. Before we get going here, I just want to say thank you to today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service with a mission to empower each and every person to express themselves through scent. Whether you're a newbie to luxury scents or you're just looking to deepen your connection with them, Scentbird has something for everybody. And for just $17 a month, Scentbird lets you pick out a 30-day supply of a designer fragrance. And instead of dropping hundreds of dollars, potentially, on a full bottle of a designer perfume, you can actually just like switch switch it up every month with Scentbird, pick different scents every month, or you can stick with your tried and trues. They have plenty of options for men, women, and unisex options. Their scent catalog has stuff like Gucci, Versace, Prada, but then they also have some independent brands like my favorite, Confessions of a Rebel, but also like Skylar and Heretic. This month I received Hope Night, which is perfect for the winter season. It's warm and cozy with notes of amber, vanilla, and plum. And then I think this one's my favorite, but it's Skylar Vanilla Sky. This brand apparently has a smell the taste technology, which I totally get because the first thing I smelled was caramel. So again, perfect for the season. And as a caramel lover myself, having a perfume that has heavy notes of caramel is right up my alley. If you're ready to get started with Scentbird, I have a wonderful deal for you. You can use my coupon code SM three for 55% off at Scentbird. It's just a little over $7 for your first month. Also, it's available in the USA and Canada. Thank you again, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go. Okay, so most of these uh, come from you guys. I have a Google Drive linked in my video descriptions, every single one of them. So if you ever see something that you want me to see, the best way to get stuff like that to me is to send them to my drive. So thank you to everyone who sent me stuff. Some of this is a little older, some of it is more recent. So let's get going. The first thing I want to start with today is this TikTok video that I actually found on my own because it popped up today uh, by someone I follow. Her name is Auntie MLM, like Auntie, like an aunt, A-U-N-T-I-E-M-L-M on TikTok. I believe that's her Instagram handle too, possibly. But she makes some really good stuff and she pops up on my TikTok like all the time. She posted this and I just wanted to die. <laughs> Every inch of my body just wanted to give up on life as I was watching this. I'm probably going to have to cut it up a bit because there's some copyrighted music in it but you'll get the gist. This is a Prove It distributor. She has 5,000 followers on Instagram. I didn't look into the rest of her social media, but enough of a public figure. And it, what really stuck out to me here is just the unhinged change in emotions that we see. Like it is a fucking roller coaster, okay? But yeah, this has to do with all the things you can do with your time freedom and your multi-level marketing company. Like being dangerous. <laughs> like this is the kind of stuff that people in MLMs just do all day because they think they're so important and they think that their lives are so interesting that this is what they need to do. So, okay, let's press play. And TMLM here. Let's take a look at some boss babe time freedom. Trigger warning, this person is on their phone while driving. Let's take a look. No hands on the wheel. Driving, totally distracted. Hands on the wheel. Eyes closed. Stop. Please stop. Just keep going. This is content creation on the road. This is my best friend growing up. This is her dad. She's just sobbing. Okay, last one. I'm gonna switch. And now she's like, woohoo! Yeehaw! Still driving. My god, I was ripping and it didn't keep going. Huh. It's a day of reckoning. Oh, it hurts. Please stop. So At least she's wearing her seatbelt. Doesn't matter if she's wearing her seatbelt. <laughs> Boss 
babes, put your phone down while you are driving. There are other people on the road. You are promoting not only a dangerous pyramid scheme, but promoting dangerous driving behaviors. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Literally. Or wreck someone else while they're out doing their Christmas shopping. <laughs> Literally. Do us all a favor and just drive. Just drive. Holy crap, there's so much there. It super bothered me that, yeah, just like Auntie MLM said, she straight up did not even have a single hand on the steering wheel. At least like a large majority of it. She had one hand snapping or whatever and the other one holding the phone. Someone called the cops, she should go to jail. An absolute complete disregard. She had no eyes on the road, no hands on the steering wheel. Seriously, how necessary is this? To put other people in danger, like there are some of those that you could see other cars driving past her and she had no hand on the steering wheel. Driving, singing. Like, who do you think you are, dude, to be putting people in danger that hardcore? I guess the way this relates back to MLMs is that if you're gonna be successful in an MLM, unless you're making your living in your MLM doing like craft shows and stuff and not necessarily recruiting, not doing the social media thing, unless you're doing that, basically the only way to make money in your MLM is to recruit people, not actually sell the products. And how, pray tell, are you going to recruit people? by attraction marketing, of course. Her point here was to show off, look at how fun my life is. I'm going to get my hair done. I'm by myself in the car singing. I'm enjoying life. Look how happy I am, blah, 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 blah. It's all attraction marketing. She has to do this all day, every day. So that someone who might find themselves watching her videos a few days in a row will go, wow, you know, this girl's life seems fun. I wonder what she does. That's the hope anyway. That's the whole idea behind it. That's how this is all relative to MLMs. I mean, the same can be said for just like influencers in general, but <laughs> the only thing that any of these people have going for them that makes them even remotely close to being an influencer is the fact that they're in an MLM and they have a downline. Like most of the people following these people are in their downline. <laughs> Please do us all a favor and either be responsible while you're driving or stay off the freaking road man you're a menace to society anyway we can move on here this is a video that one of you guys sent me this is a distributor for i never know how to say this mlm um but it's the kanjin water one but it's a enagic energic i'm not really sure but kanjin water i got some information on here i'll read to you about it after we get done watching this because it's just so freaking ridiculous and dangerous but basically they sell a five thousand dollar water machine yeah, keep that in mind while we're watching this. Remember what it is she's selling and trying to get you to buy, basically, by posting this. Big Pharma made a whopping $1.7 trillion profit last year. Not a penny went towards making anybody understand how to live a healthier life. There is not a single pharmaceutical drug out there without a side effect, which is treated with another pharmaceutical. When we collectively understand that they don't create cures, they keep customers, the agenda dies and people get healthy. Okay, so that's what that was. <laughs> Let me read a couple things to you here that I found. So just to recap, we have a lady who sells a $5,000 water purifier, essentially. It basically makes the water, like the pH balance in the water more alkaline. So if you've heard of like the alkaline diet and stuff, this plays into that heavy. So according to Healthline, it says, the issue that many health professionals have with alkaline water isn't its safety, but rather the health claim that are made around it. There isn't enough scientific evidence to support the use of alkaline water as a treatment for any health condition. Medical experts warn against believing all the marketing claims. Drinking natural alkaline water is generally considered safe since it contains natural minerals. However, you should use caution with artificial alkaline water, which likely contains fewer good minerals than its high pH would have you believe, and many contain contaminants. More research is needed to determine its benefits. Pippi, go out. Which, okay, fair. More research is needed, fine. There's another article that I pulled some things from. By the way, full disclosure, this website is also selling their own water ionizer, but they have like a whole article about why their shit is better than Kanjin. While it's biased, I think that 
all of this makes sense. So they say that with Kanjin water, the pros is it's antioxidant water and that's all they have. And then the con says it's the most expensive, which we know that $5,000. Oh, some of them are more than $5,000. I think their cheapest one is around 3,000. Their more expensive one is double that, which is unbelievable. I did a little bit of research and most of these machines that do basically the same thing run for like one or two grand tops, but Kanjin goes for three to six thousand dollars for this for the same thing and not even the same thing whoa 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 whoa. chopping my sponge according to this article which honestly i don't know anything about these machines and i don't really care but according to this website and obviously again they're they're trying to sell you their water thing over kanjin they say kanjin has weak filtration and it's underpowered and then of course i do like that they mention in the cons that it's mlm love that like let's call a spade a spade here anyway that website says The Kanjin machine only has a single filter and it's inadequate for dealing with many of the toxins found in tap water. The filter in the Kanjin machine doesn't reduce levels of heavy metals or salt. This means that if a heavy metal like lead is found in your water, then that lead will be in your Kanjin water. So the claim is that this other company is making is that Kanjin Water's filtration system isn't good enough to filter out lead. So like if you were in fucking Flint, Michigan, allegedly Kanjin would not help you. (laughs) You would still be drinking lead. In another article I found, this quote is by an assistant nutrition professor at Simmons College in Boston. They said, with regard to health, alkaline water won't have any physiologic effect on your body. Your internal pH is highly regulated and is also varied in different organs. Right. This is the thing I always fall back on all the time. Every time we think or talk about Kanjin, like this fucking water machine, or even just the alkaline diet in general, making your body less acidic, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we all have stomach acid. (laughs) There are parts of our body that have to be acidic. Our stomach acid breaks down food and helps us digest shit. But then like there are other parts of our body that like shouldn't be acidic. They explain that our stomach pH, for example, is highly acidic in order to break down proteins, while our intestinal pH is more neutral to help absorb nutrients. Right, because if it was too acidic, it wouldn't absorb anything. It would just break it all down and do whatever acid does. Our blood is even more highly regulated and maintains a pretty even 7.4 pH in healthy people, but our bodies regulate these organs and systems naturally thanks to chemical buffers and our respiratory and renal systems. I'm no medical professional, okay? But like every time I hear this shit, it just like, it makes no sense to me because like knowing the very small amount that I know that I learned from, you know, fresh in your biology class or whatever the fuck. Like, that's just not how our bodies work. You don't need a fucking $6,000 machine to live your best life, your bestest, healthiest life. Anyway, that's all I wrote down there. But so obviously with the video we just watched, let's get back to that, shall we? We just watched a Kanjin water distributor basically being like, hey, Big Pharma is awful. And they don't want you to know that just by drinking our special water, you won't be sick anymore. The insinuation is don't use pharmaceuticals, just eat some fucking strawberries, you know? And listen, not all pharmaceuticals are for everybody, but there are some people who would be dead without their pharmaceuticals. So don't sit here and be like, big pharma bad, like, okay, 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 okay. And I'll also admit the way that medicine is ran in this country, I think it's horrible. I think it's exploitative, manipulative, predatory, just like awful. Don't even get me started on insulin prices, dude. Talk about predatory. It's literally like pay us thousands of dollars a month or you die. This whole thing is suggesting that like got diabetes, all you gotta do is eat some broccoli and drink some alkaline water. No, got cancer. (laughs) Just put some of my water on it, drink some water. Or like, I don't know, just suggesting that like maybe if you were drinking this water that you wouldn't get cancer in the first place. It's fucked up. It's all fucked up and it's just not true and it's dangerous, dude. I'm watching this and all I hear is don't take meds, drink alkaline water instead. And that is so dangerous on so many levels. Like this kind of stuff is so freaking dangerous. And it's not like you can get this stuff taken off the internet. Let's be honest. I mean, we saw this kind of stuff going on with COVID, with people eating horse paste. Like, (laughs) just the misinformation is wild. And and the amount of times that we've seen stories of people who have literally lost their lives because they stopped taking their medication and tried something different. I get how much it kind of sucks to be medicated. Like, I am on antidepressants. I've been on them for coming up on 10 years, I think, of my life. And I need them, okay? I've been off of them since I started them and I've gotten back on them. You don't realize that you need them until you kind of have like an epiphany. Like I need 
fucking help and I, I'll do whatever it takes to get better. And then you do it and it starts making you feel better. And so you're like, okay, I guess I'm cured. And then you stop taking it. And then guess what happens? You're like way worse than you were before. I think because you kind of like, well, you go through withdrawal, first of all, but you also know what it's like to feel normal again or semi-normal, I guess, whatever your version of normal is. And then to go back to what you were before, it's like a shock to your system, dude. It's bad. So many of these companies that like try to get people off their medications, it's like, that's so dangerous. That is so dangerous. And not even just for like depression and shit, because like they like to focus on that shit a lot. I guess my point is just shut up. <laughs> just stop. Please stop. Stop it. Get some help. You're hurting people. Like this is harming people. This kind of shit harms people, period. And I hate it. It, it. They're literally taking advantage of people for money. Um, The other thing that she said that she was like, oh, there's no such thing as a pharmaceutical that doesn't have a side effect. What they're doing is they're comparing water with alkaline pH balance to medicine. And it's just not that. To be like, hey, your pharmaceuticals have side effects, but our water doesn't. It's like, okay, but your water is not a fucking pharmaceutical. It's not meant to cure, treat any disease. These are the same people who like will use essential oils instead of medicine and it's like, but those have side effects for sure. They can fuck with your stomach lining. They can give you an allergic reaction. Like it, they can do all these things that are not great. So just because it's like natural or whatever that these people like to say doesn't make it any better for you, right? Same thing with Kanjin. Like there's just nothing there. And like Healthline said, sure, it's probably safe, but it's ineffective. Meanwhile, you have videos like this circling around that are like, stop taking taking your meds and just drink my $5,000 water instead. It's honestly disgusting the way that they are just preying on people like this. It's sickening. Anyway, let's move on. Ooh, this one I thought was super interesting. Uh, it's more Young Living bullshit. The person who sent this to me said, so little backstory on these screenshots. These are from a Young Living team leader, Crown Diamond, I think. They are her team recruitment numbers for the year. I found it hilarious that they preach only two kits a month and you'll be successful when a majority of the top enrollers on a team of 8,000 people didn't even sell one kit a month. Right, okay, so if you don't know anything about Young Living and how it works, what they've been pushing in all of the um, team calls and corporate calls and stuff is the whole just takes two. Like all you have to do is just recruit two people a month. That's what they say. They're like, it's so easy. It's so doable. Anyone can do this. So she says that this is the team recruitment number and not like the actual entire company. But still, I mean, I think it's re a really interesting look into here. So um, when they say two kits a month, that means they're enrolling two people a month or essentially recruiting to sell a kit to someone they have to be enrolled with Young Living. So that's what we're looking at here. So here we are, top enrollers. Okay, you know, we do have a few people at the tippity top there. Her number one recruiter on her team recruited 247 people in the year of 2022. And then the next person down is 94 and then 91. And then just dwindles from there. There's multiple screenshots here where you can just see how quite honestly pathetic these recruitment numbers are. So this person said it was a team of 8,000 people, which obviously we're not seeing all 8,000 of them here. But in order to do what Young Living Corporate wants you to do, which is to recruit two people per month, that means you have to recruit at least 24 people a year. And how many people are recruiting 24 people a year? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 people. 13 people on her team of 8,000 people were able to recruit two people per month or, you know, 24 people a year, basically. So some months might've been better than others. We all know how that works. It's just another example of how absolutely impossible this is. Like, I'm like, why did she share these numbers? Did she think that this was a brag? Did she think that this was impressive? Like the one person that's underneath her, which is a gold. She says she's a royal crown diamond. So she has one crown diamond underneath her. And that crown diamond, which I think is the second rank from the top, that person only recruited 31 people. Second rate from the top. Listen, for most people, that's a lot. Recruiting 30 people, like damn, I could never. Couldn't even recruit one. <laughs> I'm just saying that Young Living is setting these unrealistic expectations. And I have a video where I sat through a Zoom call where they were preaching this, like, oh, it's so easy. Just two people a month, blah de blah de blah And it's like, I mean, you're preaching to literally everyone, like 99% of people in Young Living. 
to just recruit two people a month. There's a crown diamond in here that only recruited 22. So you're gonna sit there and be like, hey, crown diamond, you're not doing enough. You're the second rank from the top of the company. You're not doing enough. You're not recruiting enough. So not only is it impossible to keep up with for your average Joe, it's also completely impossible for the people in the top 1%. No one's doing this shit. But also I feel like looking at these numbers, I'm like, that's probably because like people are just like unwilling to join now. So much happened this year with Young Living that people are just kind of like, mm, no, I'm not gonna join. I heard some things about that company. I'm not gonna join. <laughs> Good. Looks like our shit is working, even though they want to sit there and be like, uh, haters bring us free advertisement. Woo, no, we don't. Say it all you want, but the numbers speak for themselves. This next one was just a picture. Here, I'll show you the picture right now. So it was this picture and then it was sent with a message. So I'm just gonna read this real quick. This person wants to remain anonymous. They said, I have a foster child and we got this in her Christmas gifts from the county. I feel like a moron because I didn't check her gifts and just wrap them. The gifts are mostly donations that people give for those in need. I noticed out of the corner of my eye that it had a crown on the package and had her give them to me with the promise that I would buy her some safe ones. It makes me sick to think that someone would give this contaminated and unsafe garbage to kids in need and especially to those who are removed from their family and generally have nothing. It's bad enough when like you have a distributor for an MLM in your family and then they're like running around giving people stuff from their MLM as Christmas gifts, you know? Like, okay, please stop. Plenty of people are quitting paparazzi, so it's entirely possible that this is like an ex-rep and just like didn't know what to do with their inventory that they've been loading for however many years. The thousands of pieces that they have just infecting their house with lead poisoning. So it could be that. Or the even more horrible possibility is that this is someone who is a current paparazzi distributor and is giving it to these kids in the hopes that either a they're old like maybe they're 17 or 18 or something and they're like this is so cute well I guess they wouldn't be 18 if they were in foster but 16 or 17 maybe and they'd be like this is so cute I want more and then you know eventually they turn 18 and it's like well just join our team you know whatever like or what's probably more likely is that the parents will see it and be like hey this is cute what's paparazzi and then they'll look into it and be like well my daughter loves these earrings so I'll just sign up or like you know I'll make a purchase or I'll sign up as a distributor myself. That's also a possibility and we see that shit all the time. Like it makes me wonder if there was a business card in there too. If there wasn't, you know, it, maybe it's option number one where it's just someone who's just trying to get rid of their shit. But like, why did you quit paparazzi? Is it because you heard that there's lead in the jewelry? Because if that's the case, then it's really fucking shitty that you used foster children as a means to get rid of your shit, make yourself feel better. I'll just give it to charity. It's a charitable donation. Can't you like write that shit off on your taxes too. Either way, there's a lot of possibility for this kind of like manipulation to happen. And we would be silly to not even consider for a second that that might be what's going on here. It's honestly so disgusting. Like it, it <sighs> The only way that this can be like valid is if the person who donated them had no idea that this was like lead infested jewelry. But at this point, I also don't believe that anyone in paparazzi doesn't know that at this point or hasn't at least heard it and known that it's a topic of conversation, you know? And also like who even wants this shit? Come on, no one wants this shit. But kudos to this mom for being like, I promise you I'll buy you some good stuff or some stuff that isn't laced with lead because like you don't want that shit in your house anyway. If you know something has lead in it, then yeah, you're gonna wanna get rid of it. <laughs> Don't put that shit on other families. You deal with my problem now. You deal with all of the inventory I spent thousands of dollars on. No, it's not fair. Please don't do that. Children in foster care deserve better, all right? Anyway, this is one that you guys sent me. It, this one's a quickie. It's just something that's just stupid. <laughs> I call this HUD math. The question says, why start a side hustle? And the answer is, basic math, <laughs> please. So what we have here is literally what they call it. Yeah, basic math. <laughs> By the way, if you get an extra $300 a month, you will have an extra $3,600 a year. Yeah, that is how basic math works. And obviously they go all the way up to what? $2,000 a month? Yeah, extra $24,000 a year. I think what they're banking on here is that someone would see this and be like, oh yeah, I never thought of it that way before that if I start a side hustle, I will have extra money. It's like no fucking shit. Like maybe you just, they just needed to see the numbers in front of
one of them, right? To be like, oh, you know, there's some people who are like visual learners, I guess. You kind of have to give them charts and graphs and shit for them to see what you're talking about. So this is probably for those people. Be like, oh yeah, I guess I just never thought of that before. I've never seen the numbers like that. Like you think, you know, $2,000, that could be helpful to most families. But I never realized that that meant I'd be making an extra $24,000 a year that I'm not making now. It's like, okay, but the amount of people, oh my God, this eyelash is driving me crazy. The amount of people who are making that amount of money in their MLM, in their side hustle is like none, <laughs> practically none, basically zero. You see a chart like this and you're like, oh, that's, that's easy. Yeah, it's just basic math. Basic math is easy and therefore this will be easy. No. <laughs> Sorry, that's wrong. You cannot do this. Distributors would hear me say that and be like, oh my God, she's such a dream killer. Don't listen to her. You can do it. No, you can't. <laughs> I'll just tell you right now, save yourself the trouble. You can't do it. You have a less than 1% chance of making $2,000 a month in your MLM. Like start an actual side hustle and then maybe. Okay, this is one that one of you guys sent me a while back, but I love it because it has to do with Costa Gara, who is the CEO of Velavita, which I did a deep dive on it a few months back. And then Costa Gara uh, threw a tiny man boy tantrum and sent me a cease and desist letter through email. <laughs> I have videos about that too. He's a billionaire and I pissed him off enough that he felt like he needed to threaten to sue me. So I love to hear shit about this guy and also talk shit about this guy. <laughs> The post says, back in December, I heard God tell me to get off my ass and work my business. First of all, I don't think God told you that. <laughs> hypothetically, if God were real and hypothetically, if he did actually talk to people, the last thing you would hear him say is, get off your ass. <laughs> not my God, not my Jesus. <laughs> I was lazy and didn't listen. January 3rd rolled around and a door was unexpectedly shut, but another one that I've been wanting to open for years presented itself to me. The only thing I had to do was walk through the door and trust God's plan for me. These past three months have been hard, but I've kept my faith knowing God will provide, especially since it's his plan that I'm following. God showed me again how powerful he is this weekend when I got to meet and hang out with the founders and president and CEO of our company. There was something that Costagara said to me that I will share at a later time, but made my heart instantly feel a peace and I knew that all that I've been through these last few months were just so I'm prepared for what's about to come. I know for certainty now that my life is about to change and in the most amazingly big way. God's got my back and Costa has my back too. Now you can continue to stalk my Facebook and watch me or you can join me. The choice is yours. But if you get anything out of this post at all, if you feel that nudge from the big man upstairs, I wouldn't wait. Things are about to blow up and get really good. Oofa doofa, okay. Where to start? Um, first of all, the thing that like really stuck out to me the most is that she's like, God's got me and so does Costagara. Idolizing him as if he's God, as if he is on the same level as Jesus H. Christ. That shit's wild to me. Maybe it's just because I've been like back on a true crime binge, but like a lot of people who murder people will turn around and testify that God was talking to them and telling them to kill people. That's not... <laughs> the voice of God talking to you, sis. So she's just like, if God's telling you to do something, like, I recommend jumping into it and just doing it. And it's like, uh, <laughs> these people like to say that God tells them to do some crazy shit. So maybe don't actually. Maybe don't actually do that. <laughs> but it just brings me back to like feeling <laughs> the same way I felt when he threatened to sue me, Mr. Costagara, not God. God's never threatened to sue me yet. But Costagara, uh, when he sent me the cease and desist letter, also submitted a privacy claim on my video. Basically, like, she's infringing on my right to privacy by using my YouTube videos. And it's like, no, that's called fair use, buddy. But anyway, let's just assume you don't know what that is. The fact that you have people on the internet that are comparing him to God. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like sign number five million that he's a public figure. <laughs> Most of the time when somebody is idolized like that, they are not just like some nobody, you know? It's people who have like parasocial relationships with people. I just can't stand Costagara. <laughs> Here is a post from an It Works hun that's super duper cringy. It just says, I sat back and watched a girl on social media, kind of like you watch me. First of all, it drives me nuts when <laughs> these people are like so full of themselves. A lot of these people like get their ego stroked and I was one of them, okay? When I joined Limelight by Alcone, it was Limelight by Alcone back then, but 
I was basically recruited because like I told my upline before she had actually recruited me. I told her I have been in an MLM. I was in Gold Canyon. I was selling candles and like it didn't work out for me, you know? And she's like, well, that's because you're so good at makeup. I say as like my eyelashes falling off. That's because you're so good at makeup. <laughs> when you go to sell makeup, you will actually sell it because you're so good at it. And you can like make those sales. It'll sell itself because you're so good at it. Like candles are not for you. Like you weren't meant to sell candles. You were meant to sell makeup basically because you're so good at it like my ego got stroked and I'm like yeah maybe she's right like maybe this will be so much easier than candles because like I can actually use the product and show people how to use the product and then they'll definitely buy it from me that was my thought process there is with a lot of people a method to recruit them by stroking their ego so then you see people like this like you're watching me just to get this out in the clear I'm not watching you chick I've never heard of you in my life someone sent this to me the person who sent this to me might be someone that you know personally I don't fucking know who you are <laughs> But also like, girl, no one's watching you. Like just because you're Facebook friends with someone doesn't mean that people are like watching you. Like saying you watch me. <laughs> what a good kitty. It basically implies that like you are willingly invested in the content they're creating, right? Like for me or for other YouTubers and stuff, like my, that's what my online presence is, making stuff for people to watch. So like it makes sense for me, but like that term watch me like doesn't apply to people in multi-level marketing companies who are just making dumb fucking posts like this. Like no one is watching you. You just so happen to have some Facebook friends and people are scrolling by and being like, mm, okay, that's what that chick's doing, cool. Anyway, sorry, we'll continue. For two years, I sat back and watched. I read her posts. Sometimes I was interested. Sometimes I rolled my eyes. Oh, you mean like the way we're all rolling our eyes right now? <laughs> Like how all of us just like have a headache now because our eyes are just rolled completely backwards into our head. Sometimes I wondered how fake it was. Ha ha. You mean like that? Ha ha. You just put at the end of the sentence. Mostly I was inspired by her drive and how committed she was to her business. That's bullshit. Sorry, I'll just call her right now. Like who looks at someone on Facebook and is like, wow, that person is so committed to their business. <laughs> Maybe some people, sure. Like if it was like art, if someone is trying to make a living selling pieces of art, like you have an actual skill and something, you know, that is really hard to make money in uh, despite how good you are at that skill. That's something to admire, right? It's like, damn, that person has a lot of talent and they're just committed to making this work for them. That's great. It's not the same with MLMs, dude. It is super not the same. And I don't think anyone looks at someone in an MLM and goes, wow, it's so inspiring how committed she is to her fucking pyramid scheme. <laughs> One day I decided to try it out for myself. If she could do it, I could do it. Why not, right? I started to believe in myself and earn money. I'm enjoying a new challenge. I get to stay home with my child. Right now, I might just be that random girl on your Facebook, haha. <laughs> But keep watching, I might also be that person that can lead you to a huge change in your life. Or maybe to something you didn't even know you wanted slash needed. And then they also sent their like about section from Facebook. Oh shit, she's young. She's 10 years younger than me. She's about to turn 22. That's young. Holy shit. It's no wonder she feels this way, right? It's no wonder that she's saying all this shit because she's young and easily manipulated. When you're in your early 20s, you're still in your formative years. Your brain is literally still developing. And it's really gross that people would prey on people this young who literally don't have fully developed brains yet. They soak this shit up like a sponge. And that's basically what happened here. Clearly, she's she's drinking the Kool-Aid and it's gonna be harder to get her out of the Kool-Aid once she realizes that this shit is not gonna work out for her. I don't have my phone. I don't know what I did with it, but I would look her up on Facebook to see if she like actually has a team, like a sizable team for herself. But it's just, it makes me sad that she's so young. She's got a kid and of course, you know that it worked on her to be like, I get to stay home with my child. Why don't you join my team and you can stay home with your child. She's like a young mother. Oh my God, it's awful. It's so awful. But a 21 year old is not gonna be like, wow, that person is so committed to their business. That's so inspiring. No, like when you're 21, that's the last thing you're thinking of. I might be the person that can lead you to a huge change in your life, but like she's doing that right now for herself. Like she's actively trying to make that change in her life. And the way that she's going to do that is by recruiting a shitload of people before she's made that change in her life. You know what I mean? Like she hasn't made this huge drastic change. She hasn't started making a shitload of money. I'm assuming anyway, I can't imagine that. She's like just rolling in it right now. Like this is a post that sounds to me like she's literally inflating her earnings and her experience in the company 
because if she seems successful, then other people will want to join her too. It's like, oh, she's only 21 years old, 22 years old, almost 22. And she's already all so successful. Like, wow, I should join her. Because if a 21 year old can do this, so can I, you know? There's one more thing I want to go through today. Now, I'm pretty sure this girl looks really familiar. And I think that this is the lady who like bought a shitload of ice cream. <laughs> I don't remember much else about that video. I think she was complaining about like how much groceries cost. Meanwhile, she's like unloading like four gallons of ice cream into her freezer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is that same girl. She's with Monet. And it's just interesting. She's basically um, just showing us how much she's been inventory loading, which if you don't know what inventory loading is, it's basically in an MLM where you end up buying so much product that you're never going to use. A lot of it is because like in Monet, for example, they have a lot of flash sales. So it kind of gets you to want to spend money because it's like, it's all cheap right now. Might as well get it at a discount, but you might not even use it. Some MLMs will give away free product based on like your sales or something like that. Or a lot of people will end up making monthly purchases that they're never gonna use because they need to meet their rank. So if they like, usually there's a minimum personal volume that you have to make in multi-level marketing companies. If you have a downline, if you don't meet that PV qualifier, then you don't get your bonuses, your team building bonuses, all that stuff. You don't get that <laughs> for the month if you don't have a certain amount of PV. And PV comes from either personal sales or personal purchases. So if you didn't make a bunch of sales, you didn't make enough sales that month, you might feel obligated to then make those purchases yourself so that you can make commissions off of your downline. So that's basically what's going on here. That's what we're looking at here. They're basically showing off how much extra product she has. It is 5.45 in the morning and I um, came into the dining room and I have like so many freaking boxes of Monate stuff. Like so many freaking boxes of stuff. I am a flash sale fanatic. I buy on almost every flash sale. Sorry to pause it so early, but like, yeah, no, so she tells us straight up where she got all this product from flash sales. And Monet has flash sales all the time. They're just like, oh, hey, by the way, we got a sale on this shit. And it's like, it's it's FOMO. They're, they're preying on their distributors with FOMO. So FOMO is the fear of missing out. Literally preying on somebody's fear to be like, if I don't spend this $80 to get this hair oil that usually costs a hundred dollars then like next time i need it when i run out of it i'm not gonna have it and i'm gonna have to spend a hundred dollars instead of the eighty dollars i would spend if i bought it now so and they do this like every week or every other week or something friday is flash sale day for money which <laughs> is payday for a lot of people. So they have like all this new money in their bank account from their nine to five job. So now they have like extra money that they can just blow on Monet. Like they, this is very well thought out on Monet's end. So here's prime example number one of why they do this. And not only that, they disguise it as like, oh my God, let's share this to our customers and we'll make all these sales. The thing is, is that they don't have any customers. Actually, no, that's a lie. They are the customers. <laughs> at one point, Chelsea Suarez, I know she had to end up taking the video down, but she did at one point have a video exposing Monate's financial records because they basically left them up to the public to find and she I don't remember the exact number but I think she found out maybe it was one percent oh my god I don't remember I wish I could like look back at that video and tell you but she had to take it down but it is a very small amount of actual sales that come in to Monet from outside customers. So people who are not VIPs and people who are not distributors. When they do these flash sales, the people who are buying all this product for discounts are the distributors. They are not actual outside retail customers. They're just not, most of the time anyway. And by most, I mean like 99% of the time. Like literally, I think we, I, I wanna say that those were the numbers that Chelsea ended up finding out. I love these products so much. But I feel like I have an overload. So I think I'm gonna come up with a really cool giveaway. As I was organizing, I'm like, dude, I think I could do like a whole skin giveaway and maybe that's creepy a giveaway. So I'm gonna think of an idea for a giveaway and then I will let you know what I'm gonna do. Um, but dude, I found some of the coolest stuff. Like get our gift set. We've um, towels, the wraparound towels. I have a, a full spa set. Um, I have the scrunchie and iPad set, which I am currently wearing right now. It is a silk scrunchie. It's super like stretchy. It's not real tight and heavy. So it's not going to cause that like damage on your hair from, uh, wearing a ponytail, which like if you've experienced ponytail damage, you know how bad it is. Um, Anyways, then I've got like 
oils and I've got ACV gummies and I have our bronzer set with the special brush that comes with it. Like I, I'm gonna hook someone up. I'm gonna do, I also do drawings for my VIP. So if you place an order um, during last month, if you placed an order at all, flex ship or a flash sale order of any kind, um, you are thrown into a, it's a, like a raffle wheel um, and it chooses one winner and then you get a free product for having placed an order. So I haven't done last month's yet. So I'm going to go create that report and I'm going to put that together and I'll let you guys know. Now, the other thing that's sticking out to me and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but what's sticking out to me is that like, isn't this technically like something that would fall under a lottery only because this is not a no purchase necessary thing. Like she's basically saying, if you spend money with me, if you give me money, then you will be entered into this raffle. It's not a donation because like, obviously, there are a lot of, I guess, organizations that you'll go to and it's like you buy a raffle ticket or whatever. But in order to be entered into this raffle, you have to buy a product from her. So doesn't that make it subject to lottery rules, which there are a lot of like actual laws and stuff around that. I should look that up. Marketers beware, your social media sweepstakes or contests could be an illegal lottery. I'll try to uh, just get the highlights here. States usually define lotteries as having three elements, a prize, a chance and consideration. If your sweepstakes or contest has these three elements, it's likely a lottery and may violate applicable lottery laws unless it falls within a recognized exception. The chance, obviously, this means that winning or selection of the winner is dependent on chance not necessarily dependent on skill. For example, winning a sweepstakes is dependent on chance because winners are drawn at random, which is what she literally said she'd be doing. The workaround to remove consideration is to add an option in the terms and conditions to enter the sweepstakes via an alternative method of entry or a free form of entry that eliminates consideration. Common AMOE, alternative method of entry, is permitting entrance to mail the sweepstakes sponsor a three by five inch note card with the entrance personal information, which courts have previously held is not consideration. What this woman is doing is saying, in order to enter this sweepstakes, she did mention something about VIPs there. So VIPs with Monet are actually actively paying. They're on an auto ship. So yeah, every month they're buying something on an auto ship. They're spending money every single month. You cannot join that sweepstakes that contest or the giveaway or whatever. You can't join that if you're not already giving her money. So that in and of itself, based on what I'm reading here, sounds to me like it would be considered a lottery because it has all three elements. If someone has to spend money to enter your contest, then like you can't argue that shit in court. That's not gonna hold up. Liking a social media post to get an entry, that sounds like it'll hold up in court. But anyway, my point is, is like, I feel like there's just so much wrong with this. There's the inventory loading shit. She's like, I have so much shit that I need to get rid of it. <laughs> So she's a victim of FOMO in that MLMs frequently use in order to get people to spend more money with them. But she's also literally running what I believe to be an illegal lottery. So that's interesting. Anyway, that's it. I hope you uh, enjoyed this trip with me. <laughs> now let's get to thanking some people. First of all, thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, link is down below. Code is down below. Click my link, enter the code. Get yourself a sweet deal. Thank you for supporting the sponsors on this channel. It means a lot to me. And it also keeps them coming back. So thank you so much. And now let's thank my patrons and my members. Guys, the names I'm about to read off are my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private Discord server. We have a postcard club. They get early access to videos sometimes whenever I'm able to. And sometimes more than that. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie. Or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my... YouTube memberships. Whatever works for you works for me. They're both the same, just different platforms. So whatever you want to use is fine by me. And with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Hula Chowdown, Janelle Pratt, Amanda Shannon, Christy Taylor, Elizabeth Wyatt, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Ryan Mew, Sheila Tapia, Alice W, Boris Geller, Caroline Reed, Daniel Urena, Hannibal Crossing, Heidi Haw, Kim Cartwright, Maddie Darley, Marley Fletcher, Ray, Tuesday the 13th, Hannah, Little Birdie, Miss Blue, Mira S.I.K. 
Kay, Blazed Goddess, Martine Hubert, Carrie Kay, Vegan Chicky Nuggy, Love to Be Evil, Natalie Scott, Colin F, The Best Elephant, Jessica Billhart, Laura Jensen, Mitchie 84, Jess Kronfeld, Emion, Auntie Lou, and Fallon Lowry. And to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and being you. And even if you're not one of my financial supporters, thank you for making it to the end of this video because YouTube loves watch time. So when you watch my videos, YouTube says, oh, people like this, I'm gonna push it out to more people. So you just being here is something that I'm extremely grateful for. Keep making waves, babes. I'll smell you all later. Mommy Tsunami, out.